honor to be speaking with you all today. We're here at the IPCR. This is my 32nd year doing this show. 32nd year, wow. 32nd year. We started in 1982 making humidors for Alfred Dunhill. We became the manufacturer of all their humidors uh, for probably 16 years until the shops closed in the United States. And at that same time they were closing, luck would have it, Marvin Schenken started a magazine called Cigar Aficionado, as everyone knows. And we did the big, we, he called me and he said, you got it, Daniel, you got to be a part of my magazine and uh, come to the big smoke in New York and see, you'll see the energy and see what's happening. So I did just that and then became an advertiser in Cigar Aficionado and from that point in 1992, uh, we start building our, our own brand outside of private label for Dunhill, Tiffany, Cartier, Mappin and Webb, Garage, because it was my real dream to be an American craftsman in California, designing and creating for the world's top luxury gift houses in the world. And, uh, and so when the magazine came about, it provided a uh, format and a vehicle for us to be able to tell our story and to become a global brand. And uh, so today we're excited to show off some of our latest and greatest creations. And um, we've been in the cigar humidor business for 30, 32 years, but the cigar since 1996. And Sada and I became friends. A jury crossing the crisscrossing the country doing big smoke events, and uh, I was was constantly asked, Daniel, you make the best humidors in the world by customers. Why aren't you making a cigar? Because we would buy your cigar, knowing the quality that comes out of the humidors. We would we would love a Daniel Marshall cigar. So I went to Manuel. I says, Manuel, how about making a cigar in the middle of the cigar boom? And he said, For you, I'll do it. And uh, I didn't realize at that time really what a special uh, favor he was doing for me because he could not make enough cigars for his biggest customer, JR Cigar. And Nobody when, could back then. No. And when JR found out, he told me the story that uh, Lou Rothman called and says, What are you making Daniel Marshall's cigar for? You know, you, you don't make me enough cigars. And, but there's Manuel Casada for you. He agreed to make us a cigar. He would send us 5,000 cigars a month. And then in turn, we started making special packaging for him. So we were able to trade cigars for humidors. And I had no idea what he was going to use those packaging for. It was a black mat box um, to hold about five or ten cigars. I can show you the finish. This was the finish on him. So we must have made five or six thousand of these humidors over the years. And funny enough, about roll, roll forward 16 years later, George at Nat Sherman, I'm walking in the store in New York, and he says, Danny, you got to sign this humidor in there with that's full of uh, Manuel Casada cigars. I says, what are you talking about? We never made a humidor for Manuel Casada. <laughs> and I had forgotten. And there comes out of the humidor, a Daniel Marshall humidor in black mat, and Manuel used it for their, I believe, the 40th anniversary Casada. 40th anniversary, which, which okay. they sold out of and did quite well. So that was really an exciting way into the making the cigar with a gentleman and with a, with a great friend. And the thing that always impressed me too is that we always got the cigars on time and they were always the same year after year after year. We'd have custom comments from our customers saying this is the greatest cigar because it, it, there's so much consistency. And if you go to Manuel Casada's place in Dominican Republic, all you will see is millions and millions of dollars worth of tobacco stacked to the roof. I mean, literally as high as that ceiling is, so is his tobacco bills. It's pretty high. Being fifth generation tobacco uh, in the tobacco business, they were brokers, apparently. Uh, so they know the importance of having the ability to keep inventory and age tobacco so we don't have to rush. So we, with our Nicaraguan red label, which I asked him to do after he established a great friendship and um, business uh, partnership with Nestor Placentia, I said, Manuel, you're the man always to make me a cigar. Can you make me a Nicaraguan cigar with Nestor? He said, sure. And uh, we came up with this blend and I'm extremely pleased with it. I wanted it as Cubanesque as possible, chocolate, espresso, cinnamon, nuts, and I wanted it, I knew by having my cigar made there, it would be consistent. And I told them, spare no expense, 
I don't care how long it takes you to make them, just make them perfect. You know where the cigars are going to, they're going to the best shops in the world. You know in the humidors they go to all the VIPs, kings, presidents, uh, celebrities, great the, the most connoisseurs of cigars in the world will be smoking this cigar. So um, they, they came up with it and I'm extremely proud and pleased with it. Uh, we just finished an event two weeks ago in the Edward Shehekian Cigar Lounge in the Bulgari Hotel in London. And it was a paid event where 30 people sat around uh, this wonderful lounge. And if anybody goes to London, you got to go to the Bulgari Cigar Lounge. It's owned by the owner, the legendary Edward Shehekian and his son, who run and own the Davidoff store on St. James Street. And uh, so we, they love the idea of our golden cigar. So we took one of, one of our Nicaraguan puros, and for three months, I developed a way to naturally apply 24 karat gold onto the cigar. Perfectly safe to smoke. You can eat as much, actually ingest as much gold as you want. Zero toxicity. And I make our own sugar glazes, and I can show you what the gold cigar looks like. Yeah, let's have a look at that. There it is. People look at it and they say, you can't smoke that, you can't smoke gold, but what happens is, you actually can. You don't smoke the gold, but tobacco, this burns at 500 degrees, and the gold burns at 1200 degrees. So you... You have golden ashes, only right? have a golden ash. Yes. A golden memory and a golden ash. This is not a flashy cigar, it's a celebration cigar. And I had the idea because I wanted to bring you a very special friend's 65th birthday, a cigar that nobody has ever smoked. And I says, what could be more interesting? Because I love gold leaf. I, I have a history of gold. I just love gold coins and collecting gold coins. I said, let me take some of the gold leaf that we put on the humidor that we do for President of Austria, uh, President Bush, we did a humidor for that Edgar Coleman of General Cigar made. The Austrian one right here. This is, this is uh, going to... Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. It's a gift, so he doesn't know about it yet, so we can't talk too much about that. But um, this is um, a very special cigar, celebration cigar. Back to the London event. So it was a great honor to be in London where the cigar, it is the Cuban cigar capital of the world, where they're really the cigar snobs, oh, only Cuban cigars are sold. Yet, I was sitting there in awe, watching 30 people smoke a wonderful Nicaraguan cigar covered in gold, partnered with great friends of mine, with the Balvenie whiskey people, who brought in their brand ambassador, Sam Simmons, and he told us all about whiskey, and all about the pairing, and Balvenie being the handcrafted whiskey from barrel to finishing is all done under one roof, um, very unique place. We even developed a and created a commemorative humidor for that event and subsequently sold at that event and selling here at the show. And I call it the, the Balvany 50-year-old whiskey cask stave humidor. And they call it staves. Staves. Wooden staves are used to oak, American oak, to create the cask. And we use 50-year-old wood for that. Back to the London event. So it was always great fun to see the people smoking the cigar all the way to the end and leaving the golden ash. Um, and uh, so, so there's a little bit backstory on that. There's two of them together, one with gold, one without. Nice. And at the show, we've sold quite a few. We we sell them in Munich. We sell them in Cologne, Germany. We sell them now in London at the Davidoff shop. They're available exclusively in the Davidoff shop in London. Uh, they're sold in Hungary. They're sold in Austria in five of the best shops there. And uh, I just finished uh, working with a country club in Austria creating a cigar lounge. So if any of you love skiing, love the countryside, love the mountains, I highly recommend this club, uh, country club in Kitzbühel, Austria. It's an hour and a half from Munich and we just built a beautiful humidor with 50 lockers in there. And you can go in there and smoke and enjoy the best cigars with the most impressive scenery. So the cigars now, the golden cigars, are available nationwide and worldwide, limited to the time I have to make the cigars. Because this is a project that I do as my own personal meditation at night. 
I get my whiskey, have my start rolling the cigars, and uh, it's a it's a very special moment for me. And then I sign each one of the the cabinets where the cigars are coming from, and they retail for two hundred dollars each cigar. Okay. Um, we also have probably here the most expensive humidor in the world. Oh yes. It is made out of fourteen karat solid. Gold. 14 karat gold. Yes. So it it takes gold. 100 ounces of gold to create that humidor. 100 and ounces of 100 gold. Ounces. And it's made by a master goldsmith and silversmith in Milan that has been in, in the business of jewelry, jewelry making for five generations. And it took me 10 years to find the right guy that can hand engrave these lines, and I can show you pictures in our book of how they're hand drawn into the gold. And it's one millimeter thick gold. You can tell it's a one really mil- thick yeah. coat covering. We make the humidor, send it to Italy, and it comes back. And of course, it would not be complete without the bottom being gold too. Oh yeah, hey. I mean, you see me recording it. You, you definitely need a gold bottom. You, yeah, of course. You know? I mean, yeah. we cannot put felt on the bottom of that. No, That's no, no. Dream. Of course not. And I, and I picked that up. That is very, it's very heavy. Do you have you weighed it? Do you know about how much it weighs? It weighs about 22 pounds. 22 pounds. 22 pounds. But the gold in it is 100 ounces. It's 3.3 kilograms, and. Uh, I sold it to a the Crown Prince of Bahrain. And Crown Prince of Bahrain. The only reason I have it here is because we're going to put his initials in diamond. So diamond Bobby. right here will be diamonds, yeah. uh, diamond initials. That's right. The thing really shines. Yeah, it's really yeah. a spectacular piece. One of the pieces I'm most proud of, and I think in one of the only humidors in the world which will fluctuate daily value wise according to the market there's a certain meltdown value can it, is it is it bad in bad taste for me to ask how much you sold it for or is that no, private not at all it's uh, it was five hundred thousand dollars five hundred thousand dollar human art yeah and uh, look at that oh yeah they are they are very it's one of a kind the only one in the world of its nature of course I did fill it with gold cigars. Well, go- of course, yeah, it's got to go with gold cigars. It had cigars. to come with twenty thousand dollars worth of gold cigars. Yes, <laughs> and very nice. I wanted to show you some of our other collection. Sure. We have a, a, a collection that I'm introducing at the show called Passion for the World Collection, and this is the first one that we did with the Austrian symbol on it and flag. It's okay. All done in. Pure 24 karat gold, just the same gold that we cut oh, with, yeah. the, with the cigar, but it's in the a matte finish, and then we paint it and antique it, so it looks as if it really is 100, 150 years old. This particular piece is going to be given to the Chancellor of Austria. Chancellor of Austria. And, wow. Um, just don't tell it. no one. I should tell him, okay? Because it hasn't been given to him yet. <laughs> oh, he will. He'll not, he won't see our little video. No way. You never know. You yeah. guys are international presence. That's true. You know? That's true. And we I do have readers all over the world. Have readers and consumers and lovers who are reading everything you have to say all over the world at all time. And a friend of mine came by and uh, was happy to see the Austrian. The Austrian. Humidor. Yeah, I'm, I. It's a shame I missed uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was here checking out the uh, the Austrian humidor and also the gold one. He's got pictures of them up. It's uh, stopped by the first it's night at, at 5:30, right? Real great pleasure, and um, I was excited to have to be able to show him around. Uh, unfortunately, he had to come late because of uh, certain plane delays that happened, yeah. and he was able to miss meeting some of the great. The, Great uh, store owners here and uh, some of the shops. Here. It sounded like he thought he was really impressed with the show, which I think Very is a good thing. We need we need powerful allies for yeah, uh, the uh, cigar world. Beautifully, beautifully displayed, and um, I think it was just um, you know for for any cigar lover, I, I highly recommend the opportunity when it does come up to be able to come to our trade show meet the principals, meet the owners, meet the people who will do this business for free, who've done it for many generations in most cases, where they've grown up in the tobacco fields, uh, and um, where we just are so, we wake up in the morning and we say, how can we make it better, How? what can we do new, um, what does our customer want, and, uh, and this is really 
lucky to be in a business where it's all about dreams. Yes. Because as I say, I do not sell humidors, I don't sell cigars, I sell dreams. And this is, uh, this is really fortunate that all of us are in a business, uh, in that business of selling dreams and living our dream, which is the best part about it. And after 32 years, I just can't believe that this is my job. I get to meet you, talk to you, uh, and hopefully I get to meet all your readers at some point at a different events and, and all. All welcome to California. And, uh, and I tell you, hopefully you try my cigar. It would mean a lot to me. And, um, so there, there we have it. And uh, gold cigar on the gold humidor. Wow. Well, thanks for uh, taking uh, a few minutes to, to talk to us about uh, uh, about your dreams, basically. And I'm not going to let you go without telling you about my dream of the whiskey humidor over here. Oh so yeah. Oh yeah. We should. Let's look at that let's first. Definitely walk over there and take a look. So this is the very unusual piece. I wish people could smell through the video because right now... Yeah, we don't have smell of vision unfortunately. You, one day we will. Yes. But we're going to try and explain it to you, okay? Because from six feet away, you wonder what is that smell? That smell smells ancient, it smells sweet, it smells so unusual. And if any of you have been to a whiskey distillery and into their most prized coveted room where they stash these barrels that have been there 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70 years, we'll know what that smell is like. And so what this smells like, it evokes the exact same smell in one of their aging rooms in storage, duty-free rooms is what they call it. And I was in Scotland after my London Gold Cigar event that we did in conjunction with this fantastic whiskey. Albany Double Wood. Yeah. Yes, very nice. And uh, I got an introduction to whiskey that was just priceless. And I saw it from the from the from making of the casks, meet, meeting the master Cooper Smith that does this. His name is Ian. And he personally goes out and selects 50-year-old whiskey barrel staves. He takes, takes the barrel apart for me, and he cuts out the curve and sends us the pieces of wood about 20 inches Oh, I see. I was, yeah, I was wondering how they worked out, can worked you out smell the curve. That? I yes, wish, I can. Oh, I yeah. Wish, whoa, cedar. Yeah, cedar and, cedar and scotch, much. yeah. The, ins the inside of this is the inside of the whiskey barrel. The outside is the outside. And we, it's untouched, unfinished, unsanded. And that's, so it that's really, what we wanted to achieve. It really infuses the cigars, basically, once they're in there. This yeah. has been in here 20, 24 hours, and it's so... Right at, can you just give that a whiff? Yeah, it's it's getting in there. It's a, it's a really nice. It, it actually has an interesting combination of I cedar and whiskey smell. I want to eat it. Yeah, I, I mean, or drink it. You know, if I, I could. I wish I could yeah. drink it, but it's that. It is such a fantastic um, marriage with the tobacco, with this beautiful Nicaraguan oily, silky tobacco that I can't wait. I've been smoking them every day now. This has been here 24 hours and seeing how they develop and how they infuse. And it's so much better than dipping it in cognac, oh, yeah. dipping it in whiskey where you just overpower it, but it's very subtle. We've sold one to New York, Nat Sherman. One That's is going to be sold in Iowa and Reese in Chicago. One in Davidoff, London. Okay. And we sold two others to shops that I just can't recall at the moment. It's going to have a beautiful old antique bronze plate on the outside, which is in Balvenie whiskey, Daniel Marshall. And this is the actual cask that ages this particular double wood, double wood, 12 year old. And with this humidor comes a bottle of this double wood, two Balvenie tasting glasses, and the tasting cups, which they use in Scotland. Very this nice. is something I'm very proud of. We have our passion for Cuba collection. If you got one more second, to sure, show absolutely. Where we where is that we, an authentic uh, Cuban license plate? Right. Is that what that is from oh, the 50s? Nice. 
and I, I make sure the license plates are from the, uh, the, that decade of the 1950s. Okay. Some are black, some are red, some are yellow, some are green. I tell you, it's really colorful, and I, I wanted to have it as rustic as possible, so we chip carve the top of, of each one of these boxes. Almost looks corrugated, sort of. No, not exactly. quite, but just it's, close. It's deeply, deeply chip carved. And each one of these marks is a chisel mark of where the wood has come from. So it's a, been a popular piece of the show. And uh, we, of course, for the chess lovers, a um, home wouldn't be complete without a chess humidor. Chess humidor, Where nice. You just grab your stogies, smoke with your friends, and play chess. And, um, I just cannot tell you. I know it's uh, one of those cases we're talking too much, but I, I truly appreciate your time and your interest in our passion for humidors, for cigars, and, uh, and all that we do. And I look forward to sharing it with you someday. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate the tour. My pleasure.